hopefully by now you've seen my first quilt pattern that came out with the MQG journal for Q3 of 2021. It's called Mirror Divide and it is free if you are a MQG member, Modern Quilt Guild member nationally. So I'll include a link to that in the description. But I have one more version of that quilt that I want to make. So I made the solids version obviously for the MQG with their color palette. Then uh, Giuseppe from Juicy Juice was kind enough to give me some of his fabric from the deco line which I absolutely loved and I made that version. And then I wanted to make another one with my favorite pattern designer, quilt fabric designer, Allison Glass. But I do think I still want to use solids. So I wanted to walk you through how I kind of go about visualizing the quilt digitally and then making it happen in real life. I'm not going to show you the entire process of me mocking it up on Procreate, but if you are an MQG member, I highly suggest you check out Steph Scardall's Procreate classes that are going to be uh, two parts for QuiltCon 2022. So this is in the program Procreate. I just use it with my iPad and my Apple Pencil. And this is um, the new colors of the Allison Glass Kaleidoscope Solids line. So I'm going to pull those out and show you how I'm going about creating a color palette for this rainbow version of my quilt mirror divide. So this is going to be my background fabric. It is an art gallery print from Allison Glass's 2020 collection. I love that it's rainbow. I think it's going to match the vibe of this quilt pretty well. And this is one of my all-time favorite prints. I'm going to pull out the solids collections that I have. This is the initial pool that I made. And I'm going to see if it kind of goes with some of, if I should mix in some of the other um, Kaleidoscope collections. So I was thinking this one for like kind of a muted pink, a little bit of a red, a kind of a burnt orange, a brighter orange, this kind of citrus acid lime color. Now I'm not sure that these have enough contrast. So I'm going to pull something from the other stack to see if I can find something that looks a little bit better. Um, then of course I love this teal. I think I want a brighter blue. And then move into kind of these two colors. So I'm not sure that this works either. So if you remember how the design works... It will be this main color will touch these two colors. This main color will touch these two colors. So I have to like the contrast between these two. And I, I kind of don't love how pastel-y pastel this is. So I might pick something else that's a little more... Maybe a deeper red for a little bit more, more contrast. So let's try this. A deeper red. This pink. See, I love these colors together and this works really well for me. Now, this orange will also hit these. Now, I like kind of the different warp and weft on this. It's giving it texture. And then it looks nice against these two. So this is a color palette that I've been really loving lately. Um, so I, I really like this color. I think if there's kind of a, a little bit more of a yellow, we can try this one. Or we can sub out. This is not shot cotton. This is kind of so we'll pass that. I do want to do like a completely Allison Glass quilt. So I really like maybe these two together. I feel like these are too similar. It's not enough 
difference between them but I think this has a good and I do kind of like it with the orange so then if I did this kind of green with this and then maybe um let's see if there's like a darker teal that would kind of give us a little bit more contrast i think i want like a true blue here so maybe this is a lighter color that would look nice I love her green, her, her teal green range, but I don't want it to like become the focus. What if we did this instead? Um... I can't go from greenish blue back to blue, so I'm looking for something that's gonna work as a transition from the teals. So I think these are too close. Let's see what else we have in that family. We have like true blue, kind of a darker blue, which I do like. What if we went kind of this green? Green, green, green. You can see I have a lot of fabric to choose from. If I did this and then did a dark, dark blue, or what about a bluey purple? I don't think this is enough contrast. If I did blue here, maybe this blue. I wanted I wanted to have enough movement with the colors. We did this. And then moved on to like a little bit more of a purpley color. So this like has a hint of purple. And then into like light purple. Or we could also go into like that maybe too, maybe pretty abrupt. So if we took like a more bluey purple a more bluey purple and then this is a light purple I think that's too purple that might be okay green blue this lighter blue. What if we said, what if we transitioned to purple a little bit more quickly? I do kind of like this color. A light purple and then a sort of a magenta color, magenta E. So I need 12 colors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Um, I kind of like this color. And it kind of feels like more of a mix between like these two. Just don't want it to get too dark. It's 
not bad. I want to make sure there's enough lightness. So a lot of these are from the new, like kind of pastel range of Allison Glass. Kind of, um, do I like this better? Are these too similar? Now, I really like this. If we did this instead. And then red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Indigo Violet. So I really like this. I like this together. No, I think I like that. This looks nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture and get these color values, and then I'm going to put it into Procreate and see how I like it. So as you can see in that Procreate time lapse, I really like how that color scene's going. So I'm gonna go ahead and press and starch all of those fabrics and then I'll video again when it's time for me to start cutting.